everyone, uh, Lissa LeBrock, nutritionist and gut expert, and we're back. I mean, I've got another juicy topic for you as always. This one, maybe juicy is not the right word. Maybe more painful, um, like this burning sensation, like you feel like you are like some fire breathing dragon, like your esophagus feels like it is burning, right? I'm going to talk to you guys tonight about Barrett's esophagus and I want to hear from you guys if you have been diagnosed with this let me know in the comments but also maybe you haven't been diagnosed but you suspect that you've got it or you're concerned about being diagnosed with it because you have been told you have GERD and you know that long term uh, long term reoccurrence of GERD happening in your tummy and in your esophagus means that it puts you at risk for Barrett's esophagus. So if that's you too, <clears throat> let me know in the comments. Um, so guys, we're going to talk all about Barrett's esophagus and I'm going to get you some the natural treatment for this because there's some really big mistakes that a lot of people are making. They don't realize they're making it and it's actually making the condition worse. Let's just backtrack for a second because I find a lot of people don't really realize what Barrett's esophagus is. Maybe they've been diagnosed with it and they know that that also puts them at risk of cancer. Don't panic, but oftentimes people will jump into our free Facebook community, the Love Your Guts IBS support group, and start to panic because they've just been back from their doctors who have told them they have Barrett's esophagus. And they're like, well, what the hell is that? What does that even mean? <laughs> so what Barrett's is, is when you have been diagnosed with GERD or you have been struggling with GERD for many years, whether you're diagnosed or not, uh, what starts to happen is damage occurs to your esophageal lining and eventually the esophagus starts to develop a lining or the tissue starts to change and turn more into the tissue that is in your intestinal lining. So more like the intestinal lining that's happening there. So that's really not ideal and this starts to affect many things and the most common symptom of Barrett's esophagus is pain. I mean, it's really painful acid reflex, um, you know, that you often experience with GERD or that heartburn sensation is sort of magnified when Barrett's esophagus is present. Now, a lot of the times how people cope with this is that they find that they have to sleep sitting up or sort of propped up on a pillow. Um, oftentimes they're scared to eat certain foods, especially like the acidic types of foods like tomatoes or no-go or lemon juice. These types of things really tend to burn or upset the stomach in general. And so there's a lot of coping mechanisms that can be developed because of Barrett's esophagus. Um, but I want to talk to you more about the root root cause of this and the things that you need to do to correct it so that you're not just masking it. So um, so it's this damage that is done to the tissue essentially. So um, the, the thing that I want to talk to you about is the big mistake that people are making because if you're making this mistake it will make things worse and what will end up happening is it will mask the actual root problems and so your digestive symptoms will start to snowball beyond just Barrett's esophagus and you'll find you're going to be either struggling with diarrhea or constipation or both. Um, you are at risk of bacterial overgrowth, so things like candida, parasites, H. pylori, SIBO really start to become a factor and often are present when Barrett's esophagus has developed. And that's simply because the conditions that allowed Barrett's esophagus to develop are also the type of environment that allow bacteria, the bad guys, to come in and take over. And so there is a connection between the two. And so the big mistake that people make is that they end up being put on some sort of proton pump inhibitor. Now, I get it. Like, it's not your fault. This is what your doctors recommended to you. And we were taught as kids that when you get sick, you go to the doctor, you get medication, you rinse and repeat, and that there's nothing else out there for you. But this is especially true in North America. But one of the things that we have to remember is that our doctor's job is to prescribe medications to manage symptoms, not for the treatment of symptoms. That's not what medications do. 
right? And their job is also not to uh, to get to root causes necessarily. It's they're in their job in their toolbox is available is medications for symptom management, uh, surgeries, emergency situations, and diagnosis of disease. So if you are not in a diseased state, then they're going to deem you perfectly healthy. And that's why a lot of you guys are having testing done and the docs are saying, everything's fine. You're the picture of health, but you're like, man, I don't feel fine at all. Like I can't, I can't eat without experiencing some sort of pain, right? And so the, this is why people get put on proton pump inhibitors because that is what's available in their toolbox. And the assumption made on the doctor's part is that if there is this burning sensation happening, this acidic feeling or acid reflux happening, the assumption is that there's too much stomach acid happening. But never have I ever seen a client come into the Love and Trust Your Guts program who'd been put on a some sort of protonics or proton pump inhibitor antacid that was actually tested, that had their stomach acid actually tested by their doctor. And a lot of people get this confused and they'll say, well, no, 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 my doctor tested it. And, and I say, okay, well, how'd they do that? And they said, well, I had an endoscopy done and they said that my stomach had uh, a lot of inflammation happening due to acid. I said, well, no, 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 that's, that's not testing your stomach acid levels. That's just confirming that you have damage in your gut lining, which we know, okay? So let's just backtrack for a second because this is really probably challenging with some of the things that you've been taught over the years or what your doctor's telling you is that they're assuming you have too much stomach acid. And what we actually have come to realize and find through studies and through testing, proper testing, is that more often than not, it's low stomach acid. All right, now low stomach acid, what happens when you have low stomach acid is when you go to eat your foods, foods are not being broken down properly. And so they start to sit in the gut and they rot and they ferment and this creates a gas buildup and we get bloating, right? But also it will put pressure on the valve that sits between the stomach and the esophagus. And although there can be low stomach acid, there's still enough acid in there that when that valve opens and it splashes up on the esophagus, it hurts. And so we get acid reflux, we get heartburn. And when this continues and it becomes a chronic condition, we get diagnosed with GERD. And when this continues to be undiagnosed and your doctor simply puts you on proton pump inhibitors, which isn't fixing the problem, let's just say for argument's sake, it is in fact low stomach acid. And now your doctors put you on an antacid, which further reduces the problem. Now we're prolonging the problem and eventually it develops into something like Barrett's esophagus. Okay, so this is the progression of this diagnosis. And so if we reverse engineer this, we have to go all the way back and say, okay, where are my stomach acid levels actually sitting? For the record, and to be perfectly crystal clear, if you are on a proton pump inhibitor, do not stop taking your proton pump inhibitor, okay? I am not recommending that you stop your medications. And I'm also not recommending that you not listen to your doctor. What I am suggesting, however, is we need to get you tested. And alongside what you're doing with your doctor, what we find to be really successful is testing your stomach acid levels, determining where they're actually at, correcting that, and then you can go from there. Okay, if at that point you decide you want to come off of your proton pump inhibitors, then you can chat with your doctor about that and they will guide you through that accordingly. But the big missing piece here, the number one thing that you've got to do is get your stomach acid levels tested. Okay, so that's the first big thing when it comes to Barrett's esophagus, we got to see what we're actually working with. What is the root thing that, what's the root causative factor of what's causing this damage? And so again, we pair it back to GERD. Okay, well, what's causing the GERD? Okay, strip it back even more. We start to see that low stomach acid is often, like the majority of the time. Of all my years of practice, I've only ever seen two clients that had elevated levels of acid in their stomach. Only two. We worked with thousands of clients. That is phenomenal. We have um, 
proton pump inhibitors being given out like candy, folks right? So please get tested. The second thing that I want you guys to focus on, because I want to give you a bit of a tip on what you can do to help to calm this down. So I gave you a bit of a picture earlier about what happens when you, if you have low stomach acid and when you go to eat, if foods are not being broken down properly, they sit in the gut and they rot and they ferment, okay? The other piece to this picture is that we have this mucus layer that coats and protects our whole GI tract, right from our mouth to our bum. How's that for a visual? <laughs> okay, so right from your mouth to your bum, you've got this like mucus layer that coats all the way down and protects that intestinal lining. So when things are not being broken down properly in your gut, if you have damage or deficiencies that are happening within your body and those food particles sit in the gut and they continue to rot and ferment and they're rubbing up on the gut lining, it causes friction. And eventually it wears out that protective mucus layer that is there to, again, protect the gut. And so eventually this mucus layer disappears and we just have this raw inflamed intestinal lining that's exposed. And so that's often what doctors are witnessing when they do an endoscopy or even a colonoscopy, is they see this raw inflamed intestinal lining and or ulcerations. And so again, it's under the assumption that it's too much stomach acid. So this raw intestinal lining is what's giving you all of that pain. And so can you imagine if we could just send something down that could coat and soothe like butter all the way down, and really help to calm and simmer down that inflammation. Wouldn't that feel like, like a breath of fresh air right about now? If you're struggling with Barrett's esophagus, let me know in the comments how that feels right now. Are you struggling with pain? Where is the pain happening? And how would you feel about it? if we could just get that nice like soothe coated with like, like a jelly, a nice gel that would just go down and calm things down. Wouldn't that be nice, right? Okay, so I'm going to give you exactly what you can do to help accomplish that. So the second thing that you want to add in is aloe vera gel. Aloe vera gel is so soothing and healing for your gut, but for your intestinal lining. And I got to share a story with you. We had a client, Brenda, that started with us. She was with us about four months ago. When she came into the program, she had terrible Barrett's esophagus. She was absolutely terrified to try new things. And with her Barrett's esophagus, she was struggling with fluctuating diarrhea and constipation. And what was happening was the diarrhea was making her terrified to leave the house because it was unexpected. She just, she didn't know if she was gonna have constipation that day or if it was going to be one of those explosive days. And so it got to a point where she wouldn't travel on the weekend, her and her husband stopped going on little road trips and it started to affect her relationships she started to isolate herself at home, she was scared to eat, and terrified to try any new supplements because she felt like she had tried everything. But when she came to me, she had tried everything but actually fixing her gut. And so what we did was we simply tested her stomach acid levels, turned out that she was incredibly low in stomach acid. She would, had been on these proton pump inhibitors. And so what we focused on was simply putting her through a made a gut repair system. We helped to heal up that intestinal lining, we addressed the low stomach acid, and she was able to come off her medications and started stabilizing her poops in just two weeks, we got her pooping two times per day. That's the power of getting to the root and helping your body to digest and break down your foods. And so aloe vera was a really, really big part of that puzzle for her. So aloe vera juice is something that you can easily find in health food stores. Here's a really pro tip though, do not buy the ones in the plastic container, okay? Because a lot of the ones in the plastic containers have this ingredient in it called carrageenan or carrageenan, it's pronounced a couple different ways. And carrageenan is, it's actually an emulsifier, it's a thickening agent. It, it helps to make things creamy. And you can even find it in a lot of like almond milks. They've started to catch on to this and consumers, and so companies have started taking that ingredient out. But there's a lot of aloe vera gels that have carrageenan in them. Do not buy aloe vera that has carrageenan in it. So what this special ingredient will do, aside from making it 
you know, emulsify this product um, is it can stimulate Crohn's colitis like symptoms. So it will piss off your guts in other words. Okay. So make sure you buy a good quality one. Um, usually the ones that come in glass jars are top notch. Okay. So check your local area. I don't have a brand recommendation because it depends on your area. Um, you can see if Lily of the Desert is in your area. It is in Canada. I'm not sure about in the States, but make sure that it does not have carrageen in it. Carrageenan in it. And even if you do find Lily of the Desert, some of theirs do have it and others don't. The glass ones do not. All right. So aloe vera juice, get that happening daily. And that it's like a jelly texture. If you've ever had a burn before, first of all, and you've like chopped off an aloe vera leaf from a plant and you've sliced that open and that inside, it's like this sticky, um, like really jelly texture. That's exactly what you're going to be drinking. It's diluted down a little bit. And so it's going to go down and coat and soothe that raw inflamed intestinal lining. So that's going to be a really, really great thing for you guys to add in. So guys, Step number one, test your stomach acid levels. Step number two, get aloe vera juice started, and then we need to get you on a made gut repair system so that we can get addressing all of the damage and deficiencies that are now not just creating Barrett's esophagus, but all the other digestive symptoms that are making it hard for you to feel normal. So reach out if you've got any questions. Hope this was helpful, guys. We will see you next week. Bye.